What is up YouTube and welcome to the Rad Potential YouTube channel. Here today we are doing a more science, engineering, math and stuff cool video versus working on cars, which is what I normally do. So welcome to the channel if you've never been here before. We do all sorts of fun stuff and this is just the beginning. So today's video, talking about automotive car rotisseries and how you can build one yourself. So first few things to think about. Number one, size. Number two, material. And number three is going to be the science and the balance of the whole deal. So first things first, size. If you can imagine, you're going to flip a car completely over as if it was on a rotisserie, right? If said vehicle is not mounted high enough such it can do a whole such that it can do a whole entire circle without hitting the ground, well then you're not going to be able to rotate it without it hitting the ground. So, first things first, measure how wide your car is in order to establish how high you need to build your rotisserie, okay? So, my RX-7, very first thing I did, I measured door to door with the doors off. I got 64 inches. So, on my rotisserie, I ended up with a car. We're going to simulate cars with a box, okay? My car was 64 inches wide. Now, if I need to rotate that car about a point, and this is the ground down here, okay? That means that the dimension from this rotation point to the ground needs to be bigger than one half of 64. So quick math, one half of 64 is 32. I actually built my rotisserie to be 38 inches tall. Okay, so what that allows me to do is rotate this car in a circle all the way around without having mad explosions when it hits the ground down here. Okay, so the next thing's next. The length of your rotisserie i.e. from here to here is important if and only if you're going to put wheels on it. Okay, so if you're going to put wheels on your rotisserie, when you go to put wheels on your rotisserie, you're going to have this lovely car right here. Okay, we're just going to sketch this thing out. Now you can see how wide this is. So you're going to put this rotisserie point here and this rotisserie point here on the front. If you put a wheel here and one wheel here and go to push on this, okay, when you push this, it's just going to fall apart and break. You need to link the bottom of this together if you're going to put wheels on it. That's very important because this will not work. Another important thing about this rotisserie is that if you do not provide some sort of triangulation to this, it's going to fall over. Let me demonstrate. All right, basically, you can see I built this whole apparatus back here in order to keep this from falling over when I try to push it this way, okay? Now, you might ask, well, this is a big rectangle. It's providing some rigidity to the system. Actually, it's not. This point where this attaches and the same point on this side of the car are imagining the only two touch points that your car has to the ground, the rotisserie, right? So the rigidity of this system is applicable if the car is on its side like that, like it was, or if it's vertical, like this. Still just as rigid, okay? And we're back. Okay, so, the next important thing, material. Wood is much cheaper than metal, unless you work at a scrapyard and can get metal for free. This whole system cost me 200 bucks. Considering the material, wood is not very stiff. Okay, metal is very stiff. Thus, it's going to take more wood to provide a structure that has less, you know, flex in it than it would metal. For example, this structure made out of metal could probably be a 2x2 two steel beam with some sort of device to hold that on it with some triangulation. However, out of wood, I used 4x4s and 2x6s because wood's, well, not as strong, but two, it's going to flex more, and I wanted to eliminate all of the flex in the system. Now, moving towards the most important part of this whole entire system 
is balance, okay? As you saw, and we'll see right here, I can take this whole entire thing, and with just my simple jack handle, I can move this over such that it is now level and flat, and then I can lock it into place right there. So now you'll see the seat clamp holds the jack handle, which prevents the whole deal from flipping over. Now, controlling the rotation of your car on the rotisserie is very important. I have provided this little T-fitting on the end of this, and this T-fitting holds the jack handle, and the jack handle gives me leverage, but I really don't need it. This C-clamp locks the jack handle so it can't flip over when I don't want it to, and I only needed to rotate my car to 90 degrees, thus I've provided this safety feature right here, this vertical board that the jack handle can rest on. The other thing that I have provided in this situation is this lovely chain hoist mounted to my rafter. Now you might be like, okay, your roof rafters aren't that strong. Yes, you are correct. However, it doesn't need to hold up that much weight, and this allowed me to rotate the car over slowly by myself the very first time. Now, moving to balance. Right here I'm going to show you a couple things that are very important to realize when you're going to balance your car on a rotisserie. If you have a lift and a rotisserie, you can lift your car up and down and, and really kind of figure it out with different iterations of where you're putting your rotation points. And before I show you mine on the car, I want to give you this little rundown. So, in a perfect world, you have a block. Said block has a rotational center of gravity through the center of it this way right here where the screw head sticks out. Now, you can see I have two screws on this and it spins, right? So we're gonna go ahead and imagine that this is your car. We're gonna put it on the rotisserie, okay, these paint cans, and it's level right now. You've got assorted jack stands under here helping you get your car up. When I let go of my fingers, notice, this doesn't move. And yours might not move because it could still be balanced in the horizontal plane, but vertically, the rotation axis may not line up with the center of mass of this object. So with this being perfectly balanced, whenever I go to spin this, notice it doesn't spin super fast, okay? Now, scenario number two. You have a car that looks like this. You mount your mount to the bumper in the front and the bumper in the back. And I'm working with a unibody car, not a uh, body on frame. So if it's body on frame, you will have to deal with like a firewall, okay, which is good for you. This car, when I put it on my rotisserie here, you're going to notice it'll sit perfectly flat by itself, almost kind of holding it, but it'll sit perfectly flat for the most part right here. You've got all your jack stands and stuff under it. However, you're going to be by yourself in your shop and you're going to try to push this over slowly and it's going to go whoop and it's going to crush you or punt you through the wall. So what you don't want to do is mount your car like this. In order to fix it in this exact scenario, you would need to raise these, the rotational axis needs to go up, thus being where the actual center of mass is here. So, on the RX-7, what I did, like I said, unibody car. I've got a bumper mount in the front and a bumper mount in the back. On the front, I had to raise my rotation point about 8 to 10 inches. And in the rear, I left this flat with the bumper. Now... You can see the trunk floor is right in line with the rotational axis. We have the roof and the main floor below it, and then we have the whole kind of front end of this car with the frame rails and the, um, the fender supports here. So, you might think, oh, you got lucky, da da da. Well, this is not my first iteration, and my first iteration had a flat front bar, and it was really sketchy, so I had to redo it. Now, to iterate this and show you here on the whiteboard, so, like I said, we're simulating our car with a box, okay? And much like my blocks of wood scenario, when you build your rotisserie in here and go to support this, if you support it too low, your car center of gravity is the X, okay, looking at it from the front. And as you rotate this over, the natural position of this with gravity pulling down on you is going to want to spin this X such that it's down here and your car will be upside down and it will be very hard for you to flip it back up, okay? What you need to do 
is take this pivot point right here, and I'm going to redraw this with a red marker. You're going to take that pivot point, and you're going to move it up such that it's very close, if not on the X. Now, I will say that putting it on the X would be good if you intend to really spin this thing around a bunch of times and you have a ton of work to do. However, letting it be just slightly off balance will give you the ability to have the car, when you go to tip it one way, it will want to sort of slowly fall that way. And by doing, by doing that, when you go to work on your car on the rotisserie and you have a way to lock the rotation, you can see right here it kind of three wants to go one way or the other, right? So we're going to go ahead and roll this back over this way. And you're going to notice right about here it's still balanced. But if I keep going a little further, it's going to slowly start to get away from me. And you're going to see it now. I'm not touching it, but still wanting to fall, right? Well, what this does, and let me get it just situated here, and keep in mind, this is not a lot of force that it takes to stop this. Okay, so now that this is settled, what this allows me to do is I can now put force into it, okay, from this side, or pull a little bit on this side, and the car is in a naturally rested state, and I'm not trying to just pull the rotisserie over on me. Okay, so this, in my mind, is a better situation when you know that it's resting into something, thus it's not wobbly or really on that balance point and going to come back and crush me. So another illustration of the importance of that here is if your rotation point is higher above your pivot and you move that rotation X over here, you now have a lever arm created on the entirety of your rotisserie structure and what this is trying to do this arrow is the force okay this force is trying to tip your whole rotisserie over so the width of the base albeit not the most important thing needs to be wide enough such that if you do have it off balance in your first try the whole thing doesn't go crashing and burning to the ground because if you can imagine in a static state and I'm just going to sketch it over here um, in a static state if you have this center force and now your car is vertical on this and your rotation rotational center of mass is over here this whole thing wants to cause a moment about this point which is going to try to rotate the whole thing this way and it's going to try to tip that over on your garage floor so keep that in mind when you're going to build this and you need to coordinate the balance of the whole device so once you have all three of those major things figured out and you have your rotisserie built it's very very important to always keep this thing locked in a location okay also it's very important to know that if you add or subtract weight from this during your constructive process of your car it is going to upset the balance okay so if you hang an axle under here when you go to tip this over, that's moving your rotational center of gravity down, right? If you're doing massive body work and you're going to cut the roof off of your car and fix it or cut a quarter panel off of your car to fix it, it's going to upset the balance of your car, okay? So keep all of that in mind when you go to build one of these things. The worst thing you can do is hurt yourself and then you won't be able to enjoy the project car you're trying to build. So now... With all that said, the Rap Potential YouTube channel would like to thank you for watching today's video. I hope that it was uh, instructional and that it helps you build your own rotisserie and that you can be safe doing it and that uh, your project car might get one step closer to completion with the help of this. So, full on budget for the whole thing. I spent about 200 bucks. Big car rotisseries are super fancy, have tons of cool adjustment and stuff. But... If you're like, uh, I would say, 80% of the car builders in the world, you're really spending four to five years building one or two cars. No sense in spending the cost of a car on a whole rotisserie when you can build one yourself from parts at Home Depot. So, if you like this video and you liked more technical style stuff like this, and I know it's just me rambling on and talking with the aid of some visuals, um, drop a comment because I love doing this stuff. This is what goes on in my head, um, despite not being the 
the progressive content of painting, building engines, working on cars, etc. That's uh, a little bit more interesting. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Keep it rad.